Hello everyone and welcome back to Agrarian Skies. Uh, today we're going to do some, uh, I guess, some maintenance style work. Uh, I took a little bit of time and built the rest of the blocks I needed to complete the smeltery. So we can actually click on the smeltery control thing here and see where we can put our stuff. Uh, you'll notice it doesn't have fuel yet because I'm still using the torch to finish up uh, changing our cobblestone into lava in the crucible. Uh, what I am doing in the meantime, though, is cooking up some stone so that we can make a couple of the devices I told you about that are also necessary for surviving skyblocks without, uh, you know, constantly going hungry. Which, as you can see, I'm doing right now. I just got the slowness and slowness and mining fatigue on me because I'm down to two units of hunger. So let's go ahead and jump right into that. That way I can have something to eat. Uh, the first thing we want to make is the watering can, and this is the recipe for the watering can right there. Pretty, uh, pretty simple, but in order to use it, you do need some uh, some smooth stone, so it's kind of hard to get right off the bat in the game, but still very cheap to make. So the watering can, all you need to do is right-click on some water, and it doesn't actually take anything up. It's the same as if you were to fill a uh, glass bottle. It doesn't actually take up the source block, uh, but then you can use it pretty much indefinitely. I think there is a small chance of it running out of water, but like I said, you can just very easily right-click on a, a source block of water and, and fill it back up again. Uh, but as you can see, it makes everything grow a lot faster. All these guys are actually like starting to grow up now. Uh, some of them still grow slow. Basically, all it does is it cuts down the length of time between the uh, uh, the random chance of the crop growing to the next level. Uh, usually, it's it's you know so however many game ticks uh, when it's under the effect of the watering can, it's you know, doubled or tripled, something like that. But it's a lot faster, so it does help. And when you can see the orange on these, that means that the carrots are ripe. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up a bunch of those. And in agrarian skies, if you just right click, it actually leaves the rest of the plant there so that it can start growing without you having to plant another one down. So useful so that you don't have to do a lot of planting and replanting. So I have all of that stuff now, and I'm also walking very slowly. So I'm going to try to get over here, grab up our last couple of uh, smooth stone. I'll actually have them with me already. And the other thing we're going to build is the juicer. And I remember that needed a pressure plate and a stone, I think just like that. And voila, the juicer. Now the juicer takes uh, different fruits and vegetables and juices them. So carrots, for example, we have 30 carrots. Usually if you eat that, it's half a bar of hunger. But if you take carrot juice instead, each of these will be a full bar of hunger. So now you only need 10 to go from completely starving and ready to die to back to normal as opposed to 20 actual carrots. So with this many with me here, I have uh, no problem going ahead and jumping all the way back up to full health, and now I can uh, jump and sprint around and still have 21 hunger bars left in my inventory here thanks to all the extra carrot juice. So that's done, and it looks like our lava is complete. I still haven't got one more iron. Um, I, uh, I did a lot of uh, a lot of sieving here to try to get some more stuff, but I didn't get a whole lot of iron. You will notice that I do have five diamonds. Um, honestly, I don't even know what I'm going to do with five diamonds at this point, uh, but we have them, so if we need them, they're there. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and use up our uh, our clay bucket here to go ahead and fill this up. That way, we get uh, double resources back. And I think I'm going to go ahead and complete a quest today. This one here actually looks really easy. The pneumatic servo and the fluid duct are the only things that you need. The pneumatic servo is just a glass, redstone, and some iron. The fluid duct, if I remember correctly, is just one ingot of lead and two ingots of copper. So all in all, pretty easy to make. So we're probably going to jump into that for our quest today. And now that we have our other useful things here, uh, the other thing that you'll notice is that I did use up my shears. Um, I have a lot of dirt over here now. I have enough to make a complete, you know, just absolutely beast-sized field of carrots over here, so I'll never go hungry. And I can work in towards doing the same thing with potatoes, but I did use up the, uh, the shears in that process. So I'm going to see if I can't get a little bit more iron off camera. I don't want to bore you guys with just sitting there uh, hitting a bunch of gravel and then putting it through the sieve, but what we will do is go ahead and get ourselves uh, a little bit of lead and a little bit of copper. And ooh, the other thing we're going to need to make before we do any of those things 
is, and we'll just go ahead and make all the gold, I guess. All the gold. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make our, our forms, our casts, which is another uh, quest to unlock. And it actually gives us a couple of extra things, too. Um, and all it does is detect. It doesn't actually take them up. But we need to make an ink cast and a pickaxe head cast. So I'm going to go ahead and make those. And we're going to go ahead and get ourselves a little bit of gold so that we can make those casts. I believe you can also do it out of aluminum brass. Um, but honestly, with how much gold I got and how little iron and other resources I have, I think it'll be just as good if we just do this instead. So that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to go and toss all of this in here. We do already have an iron ingot, so I can go ahead and put this on the casting table. And then the other thing that we need to make is a pickaxe head. And I think I have all the tools to do that here. The first thing we need is a stencil table. I'm just going to go ahead and set up all of our work stuff over here. Uh, we also need to make stencils, which you can do very easily, like that. And we want to look for the pickaxe pattern, which is the very next one. And then we need the part builder. So we can set the part builder up right here. And I think we can use wood. Maybe not. Um, I think you can use cobblestone for it, but you can't actually make the tools with it. You can only make the casts. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it can only be used to make casts, cannot be used to make a tool. So keeps you from, you know, making a bunch of easy cobblestone tools. That they've basically been chopped out of the game. So we have our eight ingots here. So you need two ingots for every cast, I believe. So that took up two. But now we have our cast, and then we can do the same thing with the pickaxe head. And with both of those done, that's completed. Uh, we don't really need the full guard cast or the boat. Um, oh, never mind. We get all those. We have to pick from these. Liquid slime bucket, a single-use safari net, or a reward bag. I'm going to go with the reward bag. I know sometimes you can get good stuff out of the safari net, but I'm always afraid that it's going to be a ghast or a blaze or something terrifying. So we'll go with the uh, the less terrifying reward bag. Oh, a whole bunch of decorative bricks. I'm not a, uh, a, a super impressive builder, but I feel like we could probably... Uh... Oh, wow. Lag for me a little bit there. I feel like we could make something work. I have to sit here and transfer all these guys in there now, though. Grab all those up. Uh, I can also, since I have all of it here, go ahead and make that. And then if you make a stencil and put it on top of a chest, it makes the pattern chest. You can put that next to the part builder. And then you can put all of the casts and patterns in there. So we'll go ahead and leave all of those in there. That way it frees up a little bit more inventory space for me. And put the rest of these guys in there. I'll get a better sorting system made up here before too long. And possibly when I get a little bit more resources going, I'll just go ahead and dive right into uh, Applied Energistics so that we can have a computer set up. Um, but we have that stuff done now, and I'm going to actually need the ingot cast. Put him right there. And we're going to go ahead and make that. Make that. Boom, boom. And the goal here is just to go all the way to sand, make sure that we don't, uh, miss out on any extra resources. And now we have a lead and a copper. So we'll toss two of those things in there, and then we do have the two of those we need, but we also need uh, redstone, which I believe comes from dust, possibly sand. Let's just take a look here. I believe the sieve recipes show up. There we go. Okay, it does use dust, and that's a 13% chance. Okay. I'm going to need another 
hammer. Luckily I got some extra sticks and some extra cobblestone lying around. And I only need one redstone, I believe, but I will need two glass and I will need uh, two iron. So the two iron that I have left will have to go into that. Um, but hopefully I'll get some more here when I sieve all the, uh, the dust. Let's go ahead and get 16 and then we'll go and grab a couple more so that I can get the glass. Turn those into sand. Toss them in here with that and that so we don't use up too many resources and then turn all these into sand as well. And then once they're all sand, we'll turn them all into dust and then we'll sieve them all and hope that 16 is enough for a chance to get a piece of redstone. Because all we need is one and then we are good to go. Also, I, uh, I checked around with uh, F7, uh, which basically makes it so that if mobs are going to spawn, it shows up on your on your map here. So if I take this off, all of these little yellow squares mean that at night zombies will spawn, or you know, uh, aggressive mobs will spawn. And if they happen to be red, that means that they'll even spawn during the day. So I use that to make sure that there's not any areas where I have to worry about uh, monsters spawning. And just in case anyone didn't know about that, I figured I should go ahead and mention it as well. But now let's go through all the dust and see if we can get ourselves some redstone. Pulverized lead ore is not it. Pulverized copper ore is not it. Tin ore, silver ore. I didn't see what that was, but it could be redstone. Also red, but it didn't look like redstone. That definitely wasn't it. Mm. Bleach powder, which is pretty rare, and pulverized iron, which would be helpful. There's the redstone, awesome. Now we'll go ahead and sip up these last couple here too, just in case we get some extra, possibly some more iron, because I could always use some more of that. And... Okay. So we have that, we should have our sand ready, and we have our two iron on us, so I believe that is just made like this. I don't know, let's do the way around. There we go. Okay, pneumatic servo is done and all the resources that we need to make. Let's go to this, and then lead. Now lead's at the bottom, and it'll fill out first. Take our two lead out, and our two copper out. We'll probably go ahead and take the gold out too, just so it doesn't mix in case I decide to put some iron in there, because apparently it makes uh, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's basically useless junk, and it abuses all of your gold so that you can't uh, you can't use it for actual useful things. But that's done now, and yeah, I believe it's just copper, copper, and then in the middle, and boom, flew up. Awesome. So that means that that's done too. Uh, let's go back. Oops, up here, and we get a couple of wards. Oh, I don't have enough space. Let's go ahead and empty out our pack here. And that ought to be good, right? Let's also go ahead and get rid of this, because I don't need that. And... Toss this in here for now, I guess. So, toss that in there, too. And our extra heart. And now I should be able to clean. There we go. Put the other heart piece in there. And this is another basic reward bag. Blood stairs. Well, that's terrifying. Uh, I'll just go ahead and toss those in there too. Actually, you know what? I don't know if they actually cause any kind of effect, but I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple over here. Yeah, I think it's just they look different. Okay. Now I have a way to get up there without having to jump every time, which is better for your health bar, even though I still spend a lot of time jumping, I guess. I can stop my subconscious from using that. It also looks like we have more gold. Oh, we have two ingredients. Oops. Uh, okay, so we finished two quests up, and it looks like we have uh, It's Automatic, Marietta Butcher Shop, 
survival is not tasty, fungus among us, and then the luck of the librarian. So I think next time I'm going to uh, make us a mob spawner, probably out here. That way it's kind of out of the way and I don't have to worry about the skeletons being able to see me and the rest of the base and shooting me from far away. Um, but we're going to go ahead and build a platform out here and build a little gatehouse so that they can't just uh, sneak in. And then once we have that done, um, maybe go into uh, getting the automatic thing done. The aqueous accumulator is easy to make, the vacuum hopper is not too difficult to make, the autonomous activator is going to be difficult to make because we need emeralds and I have had no luck getting emeralds so far, but I do have plenty of diamonds. So as long as I can get some emeralds here before too long, I'll take care of that, but I'll go ahead and get myself some more resources, uh, smelt the materials up the way I have ingots and stuff ready for things, and I'll also probably move our crucible over the lava source block that we have over here because it helps it uh, turn the bubbles into lava a lot faster than being over a torch, which by all means of physics doesn't make any sense. Um, okay, so that looks like that's a good place as any to stop. Um, also, if anyone's watching this and you uh, missed the first two episodes of the RAR pack, which is my Greg Tech inspired uh, mod pack that I made myself, um, feel free to go watch those. Uh, not super exciting yet, but we're going to be getting into some of the Greg Tech machines and stuff here in the next couple of episodes, and uh, it should pick up the pace here quite a bit before too long, and we'll be looking into some, some pretty cool stuff going through the Bronze Age and getting to the point that uh, we can start making some of the electronic uh, Industrial Craft 2 machines, which is going to be pretty legit. So that's the plan. Thanks for watching, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.